Hi everybody, my name is Danielle Nicole and welcome to Monetary Makeup. Today we are testing out the new Danessa Myricks Balm Powder. Now I have oily dehydrated acne prone skin. I'm also starting to get fine lines and it is nearing the summer pretty soon here. So I particularly get very oily in the summer. So I'm so excited to test out these new products. Now I picked up three different shades to review for you guys. I have the universal shade, shade one, and shade six. Now I really like to test products and see if there is a multi-use property to them. So I'm going to be testing out these products as a face primer, foundation, setting powder, eye primer, and as a bronzer. We'll be doing swatches, a wear test, and a demo. And the topic of the day is going to be what exactly is umbrella insurance and who should consider picking it up. So if you're excited to get started and enjoy the video while you're watching, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and let's get started right now. So first, let's go over some quick details about this product. This Danessa Myricks Yummy Balm Powder retails for 36 US dollars and you get 18 grams or 0.63 ounces. Now I'm definitely a fan of the packaging. It certainly feels very luxe and it has this kind of glossy rose gold finish and it has a screw off cap. But what's really cool about this packaging is it comes with a removable spatula right on the lid. Now being that Danessa Myricks is a professional MUA, I can't say I'm surprised, but this is definitely going to be a valuable tool, especially if you are an MUA. So first let me show you what the products look like in the pan, and then I will show you swatches. So the first shade I am holding up is called Universal. Now when I first saw this product, I was a little bit nervous that it may have a white cast to it. However, it is not. It is completely translucent. And the two shades I picked up for my complexion are shade one and shade six for bronzer. Now as someone who has a cool, fair complexion, the only thing that bums me out about Danessa's products is that she sometimes does not include cool complexions. In fact, the first time I ever saw a cool complexion was in her Yummy Foundation. I did also review that. Long story short, it unfortunately did not work out for me. Um, but these are definitely not an exception. These only come in neutral or golden undertones. So the first shade, shade one, is supposed to be fair with a neutral undertone. And shade six is supposed to be a medium shade also with a neutral undertone. Now, even though these products were not available in a cool undertone, they are a sheer to buildable formula. So they're supposed to flex across multiple skin tones. So we'll see if I can get it to work. Now these are actually a very interesting and innovative product in my opinion. So it has a special ingredient in it, particularly a Swedish ingredient. I will put the name up on the screen. Now this ingredient is supposed to help control oils throughout the day, but not dry you out. So you are actually supposed to be able to use this product in multiple ways. So the universal shade can act as a primer for the skin. And then the tinted shades you're supposed to be able to use as almost like a foundation or base product. You can pick up two or more shades deeper to use as a bronzer or a lighter shade to use as concealer or for highlighting. You're also supposed to be able to use it as an eye primer. And lastly, what's really interesting about this product is not only are you supposed to be able to use it as a primer and almost like a foundation, but you can actually go in with your complexion products and then use this to set the skin almost like a powder. So I am super excited to test this product out in multiple ways and next let's move into swatches. Now when I first swatched all these shades, it's very interesting because it does feel almost like a silky balm just as the name describes. However, once these actually dry down on the skin, it does dry down to a powder finish. So first up is shade Universal, the middle swatch is shade 1, and the third swatch is shade 6. And lastly, as you can see, I do have a fair to light cool complexion. If any of you out there have a deeper undertone, then I highly recommend checking out Glam Girls Chelsea. She is a YouTuber on here and she is fabulous, so definitely recommend checking her out after this. Now the only thing I have on my skin right now is my skincare, which consists of moisturizer and a sunscreen, nothing else. So first, let's get started with shade Universal as a face primer. So I could definitely use the little spatula that comes with it. I mean, how cute is this? But first I want to go in using my e.l.f. Putty Applicator Brush. Now the nice thing about this brush is it has a spatula on one end and then a brush on the other. 
So it seems the best way to go in with this product is to actually scoop out a little bit. That way you can keep the product itself sanitary. So that's what I'm going to do is start off with a small amount. And I'm just going to dab this on the skin and then use the brush to blend it out. I'm really hoping that this is going to act as a pore filling primer. However, this product is not supposed to sink into the pores and cause breakouts. There's really some scientific information about that Swedish product, so this is pretty exciting to try. There is a slight scent to it. Now, I don't think that this product is actually scented. I believe it's just the scent of the product itself, but it smells a little musky. Not the best scent, but it's very, very minimal. I did just pick up a little bit of product on my finger because I just want to feel how it feels applying it with the fingers. So yeah, it almost feels exactly like a silicone primer. And I'm going to put just the tiniest bit underneath my eyes because I want to see if it helps the concealer or product last longer or just go on smoother. I'm just stippling it into the skin to make sure everything is pressed in. All right, so the one thing I'm noticing is it does have a slight pore blurring effect. However, it's nothing major, very, very minimal. However, overall, my skin definitely feels hydrated and I think overall looks much smoother than before. So what I'm thinking is I have quite a bit of redness, as I always do, and a couple of breakouts around my chin and around my jawline. So I wanna first go in with shade number one and see if we can build this product up to actually have coverage. And if not, next I'm going to go in with a foundation and then go back in with this shade or the universal to set it like powder. So the brush I'm going to start off for application of the base products as foundation is the IT Cosmetics number 704, which is a skin smoothing complexion brush. Now the reason I wanted to go in with this brush is because Danessa mentioned one of her favorite brushes to use with this product is the Rose and Ben C41 brush. Now I don't have that brush. However, this brush kind of mimics the same shape and density. Might have just a little bit more density to it, but that's why I wanna go in with this one first. All right, so let's first dip into shade number one. And I have no idea how much product to use, so I'm just gonna start off very lightly and then we can always go in with more product. This shade does look quite warm and it definitely has a yellow undertone to it. Now it does say it's neutral, but I do find with many of Danessa's base products, they lean very yellow, almost olive on my complexion. So if any of you have an olive undertone and you're having a difficult time finding foundation, uh, her foundations and also her balm products, specifically the balm contours, those lean very olive on me. So I definitely check those out. I'm gonna go on with just a little bit more because this is a sheer product that you're supposed to be able to build up. All right, so that was two layers. And while it definitely did provide more coverage, I feel like it looks pretty dry. Now I'm not sure if that's because the product hasn't set down yet to the powder finish. So I'm just gonna leave it like that and go in a little bit lighter probably with the rest of the skin. Okay, so you know how I just said it was looking a little bit dry and almost a little bit cakey? All I did was continue to blend the product in, but this time I went in with a firmer hand and it definitely does look much smoother now. So I think I was able to correct that. All right, next I'm going to apply a little bit to the nose. Yeah, this, this almost has almost like a plasticky scent to it. But as I mentioned, it's probably just because this is an unscented product. All right, so I feel like I need a brush with a little bit more density because I'm trying to really press this into the skin, especially underneath the nose. And it almost seems like it's not blending in as much as I would like to. So just to give it a try, I'm gonna go in with this e.l.f. putty applicator brush. This definitely has a little bit more density and I've used this for foundation before, so let's try this out. 
All right, so add a little bit of product to the left cheek. I do feel like this shade is actually working. So even though I have a very pink cool complexion, I do feel like shade one definitely does match. All right, so what do you guys think so far? So no product on the right side and product on the left. All right, let's keep going. And I do have a pretty big red spot right there. And you can definitely tell my chin is very red and inflamed right now. So let's add the rest to that area. And that was just that one scoop and that was definitely enough to cover my entire face. So I do feel like you can probably build this product up, but a little bit really does go a long way. And I think that's because it's very easily spreadable. I almost feel like I like doing a pressing motion more. I wonder how this would do with a sponge. All right, so here's where we are at so far. So the one thing that I'm noticing is that even though the formula with the universal shade, I believe is supposed to be the same, I do find the universal shade is definitely more hydrating. It felt that way on the swatch. So not that this feels like a drying formula, it definitely does not. However, the universal shade, I don't know if it's because there's no pigments in those, but that definitely felt much more hydrating. So what do you guys think about how it's doing around my nose area? This is where I have quite a bit of dehydration. Yeah, and I feel like it almost has skin tint vibes, but a true skin tint, not the tints that you can build up to a light or medium coverage. I feel like it's kind of hovering around the sheer to light range. All right, so I specifically did not apply any product underneath my eyes. And that's because I wanna try going in with a damp sponge. So I am noticing it does look just the slightest bit drying around my nose area. However, that's pretty common. And it's definitely not bad, it's just very slight. So I just picked up a little bit of product on the back of my hand. So this is what I'm going to work off of. I'm gonna dip my sponge directly into the product. I'm gonna start with a very little bit amount. I probably would have went with a lighter shade for the under eye area. However, this was the lightest shade, so we'll definitely make it work. And it definitely matches my skin tone, which is blowing my mind because it looks so warm in the pan, but it definitely matches once it's sheared out. All right, that looks great. It definitely doesn't have a lot of coverage. So I don't know if you have dark circles, if this would be a great product for covering up those dark circles. However, just for a light, almost sheer application for just kind of like a wash of color, I really do like how this looks on the left eye. So I just picked up a little bit more. Okay, I love how this looks underneath the eyes. It looks so smooth. And it's interesting, it looks so much more hydrating. So let's go in with a damp sponge just for the rest of the skin because I wanna see if we can get a little bit more hydration using a sponge. Now I would say if you are planning on going in with a damp sponge, I would recommend putting the product directly on your hand or a palette if you're an MUA, just because you have a little bit more control over how much product you pick up. And if you pick up too much, you can simply tap it like so. So I don't have a ton on here. I really just wanna see if I can get it to look a little bit more, not dewy, but just a little bit more hydrating. Now it's definitely not a drying product, so I really wanna make that clear. It's just I have a lot of dehydration in that area, and sometimes different application methods just work better with different products. And I just have a tiny bit on the tip of my sponge. I always do that for the nose crease. Oh my gosh, okay. So this sponge made this product look beautiful. It looks so much better than with a brush. I don't know if that's because I have a little bit of dehydration that I keep mentioning or not, but overall, this completely pressed the product into the skin. 
and I'm not seeing any more of those dry spots around my nose. So next time I would definitely recommend going in with a damp sponge if you have dry or dehydration like I do. Now I did pick up a little bit of product on the sponge, which is of course what they do. So I did remove a little bit of the coverage on those red spots. However, I am definitely willing to sacrifice that just to have an overall finish that I prefer. So I feel like this took the look from like a seven to a nine just by using a damp sponge and going over it. All right, so next I do wanna go in with just a tiny bit of foundation. Now, if you have completely clear skin or you simply prefer a sheer to light coverage, then you could definitely make this work as your only product. However, for me, I definitely have those red spots that I would like to cover. So I wanna go in with the new Wayne Goss foundation in the shade 10, but I am not going to use a lot of product. All I'm going to do is use my damp sponge put it on the back of my hand and simply tap over some of those spots. So that way it won't be completely covering this product. All right, so I just have a little bit of shade 10. I'm gonna take the tip of my sponge. Now this on the other hand is a very, very full coverage foundation. And this is absolutely beautiful. So even though this is a new product, I have used it several times. So I do know how it works on my skin. So just on those areas that I need a little bit more coverage, I'm just gonna do a tiny bit of building. See how that immediately took down the redness? This foundation is incredible. I think I mentioned in my last video, but I do these salicylic acid treatments because I do have adult acne. And sometimes if I leave them on for too long, they kind of create these red patches, which is what you're noticing now. But it's a good day to test this product out. That way we can see how well it covers. Yeah, so I'm not going in with a full amount. So I just wanted to make that clear because I don't want to completely cover up the Danessa Myrex Balm Powder. So I'm just, you know, basically spot concealing in those areas. All right, so I just finished spot. Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to blind you guys but I just finished spot concealing with this Wayne Goss foundation in the shade number 10. So I did not go in with a ton of product. I wouldn't even say a light layer, just kind of dabbed on those spots that I needed it. Let me just say, this combination is a bomb. This looks so good using Wayne Goss and this Vanessa Myricks product. And my skin, it does not look oily, but it doesn't feel tight either. But I feel like in real life, you would not be able to tell I have any complexion products on. So let me know what you guys are seeing. But as far as in real life, it's weird. It's like my skin looks hydrated and glowy, but almost semi-matte at the same time. So I feel like I'm getting the best of both worlds. Now, the only thing I forgot to mention is that I am definitely getting creasing underneath the eyes. You know, with some concealers, I even have to go in a couple different times and basically tap it out before I set with powder. So it might just need to be tapped out again. I'm not sure. But I did want to mention that it's definitely creasing. See that? So I'm going to take my sponge and just kind of re-tap that area out. You know, the one thing I'm thinking is that this product does dry down to a powder finish. So that could also be why you might just have to tap it out until it gets to that dry formula. But it still looks so good underneath the eyes. So I was able to go back in, tap that out, and it still looks great. I would also recommend keeping the cap on this product. Same thing with, you know, Wayne's foundation and really any other product that's a liquid cream or a balm, just because you don't want the product to dry out. And I did notice the leftovers right here of the Danessa Myrix. It is definitely starting to dry down to a powder finish. So I wouldn't scoop out a ton of product, just grab what you need. All right, next we are going to go back into shade number one, and we are going to try this out as an eye primer. So same thing, I'm just going to grab a little bit on the back of my finger. Oh, first let me blend out my sunscreen. <laughs> All right, so I just have a little bit on my finger. So I'm just going to dab this on and then use the brush to do the blending. I personally prefer a brush for 
pretty much all of my primers and products. I don't know, I just don't like the feeling of going in and getting my fingers dirty. That's just me. Yeah, so same thing. I'm noticing that it just looks a hair too dry. Not super dry by any means, but I can definitely see a little bit of the dehydration in that area. So I'm gonna do the same thing and go back in with my damp sponge and just press it out. All right, you guys. Yeah, so same thing, going back in with the damp sponge, it just made this product really glow and look beautiful. Now, are you guys as surprised as I am? I was really expecting a brush to be the way to apply this product, and I don't know if it's because I have a little bit of dehydration or not, but I'm telling you what, a damp sponge is definitely going to be the way to go for me. All right, next we are going to move on to shade number six. So this is the shade that I picked up to use as a bronzer. Now again, this is supposed to be a true neutral shade. However, I do just fine with Danessa's products. They lean very yellow, almost olive on my skin. Now because this is a sheer product, I'd imagine I'll be able to get it to work, but I just really wish Danessa would add cool tones to all of her complexion products. So same thing, gonna go in and pick up a little bit of shade number six. Put the lid back on. So I have this new Shamus A brush that I wanna test out. It's actually made for cream products. So this is the AOA Studio F31. So I think I'm going to kind of dab this product on the cheekbones. So I don't wanna go in with too much product, especially if it's not going to be a good match. Yeah, can you see how yellow and olive that looks? And I'm not going to use any setting powder today because this product is basically supposed to self-set, so you're not supposed to have to use powder. Of course you could if you wanted to, but I just wanna test this product out today. All right, I think that looks really nice. Even though the shade is off, I think because it is so sheer, it can definitely make it work. And I don't know, I do actually quite like this shade. Now that it's on the skin, I probably would prefer a more cool tone option if it was available, but I think that looks pretty. All right, this brush, it's actually labeled as a blush brush. This is such a good brush. It is blending out this product perfectly. And you guys, it was like a buck. I'm gonna build it up just a little bit on both sides. Yeah, I really do think that I like this method of just tapping it on the skin and then using a brush to blend it out. That seems to be working well, at least when I'm actually working with the brush. Yeah, and this looks really nice on the cheek. So I'm thinking that because I have dry skin in the center, that's probably why I needed to use the damp sponge. But on the cheeks, this looks so nice. So for whatever reason, I think it's because I'm left-handed, my right cheekbone just always looks a little bit sloppy. So I just grabbed a little bit of shade number one, and I'm gonna kind of use this as like a highlighter just to kind of clean up the edges. Yeah, I think that definitely helped just going back in with shade number one for cleaning up the edges. So this could be a great product. If you go in with too much and you don't want to add any more concealer that could then emphasize more texture, because this is such a lightweight product, I think that worked very well for cleanups. All right, loving that so far. So next let's do the forehead. All right, you guys, I do like having bangs. However, when you're trying to film, they just get right in the way. So looking a little crazy, but let's do the forehead next. This is such a good brush. Don't get me wrong, I love my Fude brushes, but there's definitely some more affordable brushes that I also love. I really like how this is sitting on the forehead too. It's really blending in really seamlessly. I don't think I like this shade so much on the forehead. I think it's just much more obvious that it doesn't match my skin tone. However, on the cheeks, I'm really liking this shade. Again, would prefer if she had cool undertones, but 
working with what we have. This formula is just blending in so easily. It really is a no fuss product. I was a little bit worried that certain products had dried down to a powder formula. Sometimes they don't have enough time where you can really work with the product, but I'm finding that even once the product dries down on the face, you can still continue blending almost as if it was a cream, but it's not. All right, not my favorite shade for the forehead. However, for the cheekbones, really like this shade, and I love the formula so far. However, take a look at my eyes. Can you guys see all that creasing? Yeah, see, the interesting thing is, even though it started to crease, I just re-blended it out, it took two seconds, and you can't even tell that there was creasing. You know, sometimes with concealer, once it kind of sets and you go to repat it out, sometimes that line will still hold. It's not doing this. It didn't do that under the eyes either. So you can definitely go back in and just kind of repat it out quickly. So we are super up close and personal, holy cow. So I want to use my Pat McGrath Subliminal Palette. And let's see here. Let's just go in with this shimmer shade right here. So I'm just going to kind of pack this on the lid and then blend it out just to see how it does. You know, some primers do crease a little bit. And then once you pat them out and put the shadow on, they do okay. So I just want to see if that's the case or if this is just going to be no bueno for eye primer. Mm, I don't know, it's kind of, it's not too bad, but it's kind of sticking. See where it creased right on the lid? It's kind of sticking to that area. Yeah, this isn't my favorite as eye primer. See how it's kind of getting splotchy right there? So I'm going to try and fix this and I'll be right back. All right, you guys, so I just went ahead and finished up the rest of my makeup. The eye look turned out fine, I think. It was a little bit more work than I would have liked if I would have went in with an eye primer, but it was okay, nothing major. Just had to do a little bit of extra blending on the edges. So makeup is done, added blush. That was loud. And I just added a little bit of highlighter, blush, and a lip gloss. So this is what the skin is looking like now. You guys, this looks damn good on the skin. I am so excited. Now, the Yummy Foundation that I reviewed a couple of weeks ago or so, that foundation just did not jive with my skin. But this one, as of right now, this looks so beautiful on the skin. And you know, it's such an interesting texture because it feels like it's controlling my oils. However, it feels hydrating at the same time. I have never experienced any product like this. So what I would like to do before we cut into the topic of the day in the wear test is what I wanna do is use this product as if I was setting it with powder. Sorry, you guys, I've been talking a lot, so my voice is kinda of losing it a little bit. So let's try the Universal shade first. So I just moved my bangs out of my forehead. I know it looks a little bit funny, but I wanna try this on the forehead just in case it messes it up. Now that's because I wanna test out the universal shade. Danessa mentioned this shade is what you can use to set the skin, basically since this is supposed to turn into a powder. Now I'm a little nervous to do this because I do find this formula is much more hydrating than the tinted version. So that's why I wanna do the forehead in case it screws it up. So I'm just going to take my damp sponge and dip into the product. Usually I wouldn't dip right in, but just because I'm kinda of in a hurry right now, that's what I'm doing. All right, so let's see how this does as if we were setting the skin with powder. All right, so interesting i actually really like this on the forehead and i do feel like it kind of blended in my bronzer and with the rest of my skin so yeah that went well all right i just picked up a little bit more product so let's do the same exact thing with the universal shade i'm just going to kind of press it on as if it was setting powder yeah that looks good you can't even tell 
Like it doesn't look like there's another product or a powder per se on top. I feel like it just smoothed my skin a little bit more. I'm gonna do the same thing with the inner corner of the nose. Cause this is a spot where I get oily and dehydrated. All right, let's do the other side. And I'm gonna take that universal shade and pop it right where the product was. Oh yeah, that is definitely blurring the skin. I can really tell now that I have the makeup on. And I like the universal shade because you know when you go in with setting powder, you don't always want a tinted powder. You just want something to set the skin. I think this looks really good. All right, so this is what the skin is looking like. So I will see you in a second for the topic of the day. And then I will meet you back here at the end of the night for my final thoughts and wear test. I'm so excited to see how this does with my oils. See you in a bit. Welcome to the topic of the day. If you have ever heard the term umbrella insurance, yes, just as if it was raining outside, and you are wondering what exactly is umbrella insurance, should I consider picking it up? Then definitely stay tuned. So umbrella insurance basically provides protection above and beyond traditional coverage. Umbrella insurance commonly covers things like property damage, personal liability, injuries, and even lawsuits. Now, if you've ever wondered if umbrella insurance is something that you should consider picking up, then I have a tip for you. If the value of your assets exceed the liability of your home and auto insurance, then umbrella insurance may be something you wanna consider. And surprisingly, umbrella insurance is typically pretty affordable. Now, this isn't always the case, and even if the value of your assets do not exceed the home and auto liability coverage, then you may still wanna reach out to an insurance agent just to see. Because after all, just like I say in every video, everyone's situation is different and our goals are unique. And typically, umbrella insurance can be added on to your home and auto coverage. So I hope that helped to clarify what umbrella insurance is and if you should consider picking it up. So that was my quick topic of the day. Next, I will see you later for my final thoughts and wear test. All right, you guys, so I'm about to insert a clip after about four hours, so, you know, about halfway through the day. So I'm gonna show you up close what my skin is looking like. You guys are gonna have to let me know how you think this Yummy Balm product is looking. Overall, I'd say about halfway through the day, my skin, I feel like it is looking flawless. I feel like the pores are blurred, I'm not excessively oily, and I definitely don't look cakey or dry. Hi everybody, so it has been just over four hours since the last check-in. So this makeup, including the Danessa Myricks Yummy Balm Powder, has been on now for over eight hours. You guys, I am floored from this product. So first of all, the name of the ingredient that I couldn't remember earlier, I believe it's pronounced Ipsilate. If not, I apologize, but this is supposed to be kind of this like hidden gem ingredient that is supposed to control your oils, but it's not supposed to sink into the skin and cause breakouts. Now I have to say, I'm about to show you how my skin is looking like in natural daylight after over eight hours. You guys, I feel like my skin looks just as good as when I first applied the makeup. Now, I don't say that very often. Typically after a full day, usually I am oily by now. I'm starting to get a little cakey. Sometimes I look dry around my nose, which ironically is also where I get oily, which is why it often gets cakey in that area. But you guys, this product is seriously incredible. I have to say this is probably one of the most innovative products I have ever tried. So I don't know, I think this is going to be the next viral product and for a good reason. The performance and the oil controlling properties, how it looks on the skin, it is seriously unlike anything I have ever tried. All right, well now I'm just dying to hear from all of you guys. Definitely let us all know if you did pick this product up and if you've tried it, let us know what your skin type was, what your experience was. Did you love this product? Did you hate it? Did you pass on it? Do you plan on picking it up? Let us know all of your thoughts down below. All right, well, I do hope you enjoyed this review and wear test as well as the topic of the day. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. 
Thank you so much for spending your time with me, and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye, guys.